1976, the St. Louis players, to a man, believed this would be the best Cardinal team ever. Instead, it became the best ever to miss the NFL playoffs, as a third straight division title eluded them. In a season that began with an exotic trip to a faraway land and ended on the outside looking in, St. Louis won a half dozen games in the final seconds and once again were known as the Cardiac Cards, the most exciting team in professional football. For eight days in August, the Cardinals experienced the ultimate road trip, a visit to Tokyo for a preseason game with the Chargers. The Japanese journey gave the St. Louis organization the rare opportunity to introduce pro football to the Japanese and to witness firsthand their noted dedication and passion for sports of all kinds, on every level, for every age group. Uh, so, uh, would you introduce uh, your name and your position? My name is Jim Hart. I play quarterback. Uh, Jim Hart. Jim Hart. -san. Position. Uh, quarterback. Quarterback. Uh, Dan Deerdorf, offensive tackle. You hit him with the hands. You've got your hips up underneath you, and then you can, you're in a position where you can start looking for the ball here. When he goes like that, you can move right with it. You can move right with it. Don't get too much weight. When you, when we, we pass a lot, we throw the ball a lot, so we have to be in the same stance every time. You can't let the defensive lineman know whether you're going to drop back for the pass or whether you're going to fire out at him. So use the same stance every time. I'd be an offensive lineman over here. <laughs> yeah, that, you'd be the biggest offensive lineman they had. They've been doing this for a couple hours. I think we better make sure that our coaches don't get out here to see this. Yeah. Look at that, they even run up to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> that oh. makes my heart skip a beat. Doesn't it? Ooh, did you just... Oh, my gosh. The culmination of the visit was the game itself, a Monday night meeting with the Chargers in Tokyo's Korakuen Stadium. The experiment of introducing the NFL brand of football to a different culture was an unqualified success, for the Japanese were an enthusiastically receptive audience. So, a little bit of history was made on the humid night of August 16th, when having overcome jet lag and disrupted practice schedules, the Cardinals defeated the Chargers in the first ever NFL game outside the North American continent. The end result was a very good time for the team and a lot of goodwill between peoples of a different nation. The unique experience was ably summed up by the Cardinals Charlie Davis and Jim Hart. I like it, but I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go Quite an experience. I mean, quite an experience. Just look at it, man. How many people we made happy tonight? And I'm happy because uh, I'm going home tomorrow. <laughs> Opening day, the team participated in another first, the inaugural for Seattle in the Kingdom. Jim Otis and Terry Metcalf each rushed for more than 100 yards as the Big Red amassed over 450 yards total offense. But the explosion was needed as the Seahawks put plenty of points on the board themselves. The outcome was in doubt up to the final play, but the Cardinals had victory number one, 30 to 24. In the home opener, the defense atoned for its initial performance 
by recovering four fumbles and intercepting three Packer passes in a 29 to nothing shutout of Green Bay. But a week later, the defense completely collapsed, making Don Coriel's return to San Diego an unpleasant one. The Chargers handed the Cards their first loss of the season, a surprising 43 to 24 route. Back home against the Giants, the team regained its winning ways, but had to go to the very last play of the game to ensure a narrow six-point victory. Week five brought the Philadelphia Eagles, and that always means a knockdown, dragged out, hard-hitting battle between the division rivals. The big play was a Jim Hart bomb to Mel Gray. But the big story was the depth displayed by the running attack. Four different backs scored touchdowns as the Cardinals won by their biggest margin of the year. Next came the Cowboys, undefeated at this juncture. But Jim Hart riddled the Dallas defense for 346 yards and two long touchdowns to Mel Gray. Gray's great day was not unexpected. What was, was the performance of the defense, which despite the shotgun formation, sacked Roger Staubach four times. In their finest moment of the entire season, St. Louis's much maligned defense served up an old-fashioned goal line stand, stopping Dallas on Mike Dawson's tackle on fourth down from the one. The win over the Cowboys signaled the development of a defense that improved so much it gave up more than three touchdowns only once, despite playing one of the toughest schedules in the league. The defense was Coriel's top target during the offseason, and a big factor in its improvement was the right side of the line, where the Cardinals drafted number 73, Mike Dawson, number one, and traded for number 63, John Zook, one of the league's premier pass rushers. On the left side was number 76, Charlie Davis at tackle and number 79, Bob Bell at end. The outside linebackers were Larry Stallings, number 67, in his 14th and final year with St. Louis, and Mark Arneson, number 57. Two middle linebackers were lost for the year with injuries, but Tim Carney was signed as a free agent and performed so well, the position became a team strength. An experienced secondary included Ken Reeves, an 11-year veteran at strong safety, and tough, talented Mike Sensabaugh at three. The cornerbacks were Norm Thompson, number 43, and Roger Worley, number 22, a pair that ranked with the best in the league at the highly skilled position. On a Monday night in Washington, St. Louis played amid a torrential downpour of rain and footballs. 
The Cardinals set an NFL record with nine fumbles, eight of them lost. They gained a measure of revenge by sacking Redskin quarterbacks eight times and outpassing their opponents with an incredible 206 to 23 yard edge. But statistics meant little on the muddy field. And in the fourth quarter, one unbelievable play cost the Cards the ball game and first place in the NFC's Eastern Division. Sunday under sunny skies the Cardinals great offensive line was matched against the 49ers defense the NFL's leader in sacks the opening kickoff provided some weird entertainment when San Francisco forgot to cover the ball St. Louis recovered, and Jim Hart quickly exploited the error for a Cardinal touchdown. It was the first salvo in a seesaw battle that featured two superb lines going at each other head to head. Terry Metcalf's touchdown. St. Louis trailed in the final period. Then Pro Football's most explosive passing partnership tied the game with a 77-yard bomb. Mel Gray, playing with a broken nose, sent the game into overtime. And there the sun set on the San Francisco 49ers. Jim Otis, a bull among the butterflies in the Cards' backfield, carried six consecutive times to put the ball in point-blank field goal range. It only remained for the Iceman, Jim Bakken, to calmly win the game. The Cardiac Cards had won a thrilling overtime victory in a game in which it was a shame there had to be a loser. The Cardinals' big win started a streak of three games, all of them settled and won in the frantic final seconds of play. In Philadelphia, with Mel Gray and Terry Metcalf out with injuries, Jim Otis and rookie Wayne Morris sparked the offense. But ahead by only three points and with the Eagles driving for a score, the cardiac cards prevailed with only 11 seconds showing. In Los Angeles, things got even tighter. Down 21 to 6, St. Louis staged a torrid second half comeback, led by Jim Hart, who hit 13 of 16, eight of them to Ike Harris. Hart's sensational passing performance brought the Cardinals to within a single point late in the fourth quarter. Then, in a typical Cardinal caper, the Big Red offense rolled downfield, and with four seconds remaining, Jim Bakken attempted to win the game.
The dramatic two-point victory brought the St. Louis season record to eight wins and only two losses. Cardinal Cool in the hottest situations is a matter of heart. Quarterback Jim Hart, who set a team record with a 56% completion accuracy as the Big Red rolled up an NFL leading 5,136 yards of total offense. Mel Gray provided the bomb, but the team leader in receptions was Ike Harris with 52, most by a Cardinal receiver in 10 years. A valuable addition to the receiving core was small but speedy Pat Tilly, number 83, St. Louis's fourth round draft choice out of Louisiana Tech. At tight end, number 88, tall, talented J.B. Kane had an impressive season as a starter, following in the tradition of the venerable Jackie Smith. At setback was the classic pairing of speed and strength. Jim Otis, a power fullback who had five 100-yard games, and Terry Metcalf, the little guy who makes big things happen. But the significant element of the running attack was its depth. Coriel was able to employ fresh backs and a full house backfield in short yardage situations. Confident that each man had the ability to run and block equally well. Time after time near the goal line, enemy linebackers and cornerbacks were cut down by two blockers out of the backfield, allowing the third to score. One important addition was rookie Wayne Morris, number 24, a bigger version of Terry Metcalf with much the same speed and quickness. Hard-nosed Steve Jones, number 34, was a high-flying scorer who led the team in touchdowns with nine. For the third straight season, the celebrated offensive line allowed the least number of sacks in the NFL. Line coach Jim Hannafin says, they are guys who go to war together. And in football, like war, you appreciate the guy next to you. They don't have typical offensive temperament. They're aggressive people, out to take charge of the line of scrimmage, not just defend it. Number 54 is all pro center Tom Banks, whose forte is quickness. While Dan Deardorff, number 72, another all pro, combines intelligence and power. Bob Young, number 64, is the strongest of all. And number 60, Roger Finney's chief skills are his footwork and balance. Colorful Conrad Dobler, number 66, is the man opponents and fans love to hate. The all-pro guard relies on psychology, but he's also very aggressive. In the rough and tumble battle of the line, the Cardinals is simply the best there is. With a record of eight and two, St. Louis hosted Washington for a rematch they had to win. The Cardinals attacked early, but the Redskins went ahead in the third quarter. Then with 45 seconds left in the game, the Big Red stormed downfield. But from the Washington 20, with a sure shot at winning, all four heart passes failed to connect in the end zone. The cardiac cards had lived up to their nickname, but lost a crucial game they thought they would win. Four days later on Thanksgiving, the Big Red attack continued to misfire in a battle with the Cowboys for the division lead. When Hart's pass from his own end zone barely missed J.V. Kane, the Cardinals were forced to punt and the Dallas special teams made the key play of the game. The blocked punt gave Dallas a 19-7 lead. 
But with less than two minutes left, the cardinal attack finally ignited. With time running out, St. Louis got the ball back for one more try. Faced with fourth and ten and a minute remaining, Jim Hart hit a high-pressure pass to Ike Harris for the vital first down. Fifty-four seconds showing, and Hart perfectly placed the ball into the arms of Mel Gray at the Dallas 13. But here, 13 yards and 48 seconds away from victory, the Cardinal comeback died. Three in-zone incompletions, two of them controversial calls in which St. Louis felt interference should have been charged, nailed down a bitter defeat this Thanksgiving day. For the second time in five days, the team's last-minute lifestyle had betrayed them. And it now seems certain that not only a division title, but perhaps a berth in the playoffs, too, would elude the St. Louis Cardinals. And the powerful Baltimore Colts were next on the schedule. Right from the start, the Cardinals were on the attack against the Colts, and on this bright December day, a capacity crowd at Bush Stadium was treated to an old-fashioned barn burner, an aerial fireworks display between the two best pure passers in professional football. Even on this day, the Cardinals' high-powered air attack had to take a backseat to an inspired Big Red defense, which caused four Baltimore fumbles and a game-saving interception by Ken Reeves on the final play. The exciting triumph over the Colts kept the Cardinals' playoff hopes alive going into the final game of the season. In New York, the team trademark of nerve-wracking, nail-biting struggles continued as the cards seemed flat and the Giants led. Then a Metcalf punt return ignited the spark. With six minutes remaining, from the full house backfield, Steve Jones scored the touchdown St. Louis had to have. With the narrow three-point victory, the team now had to depend on Dallas to defeat Washington later that afternoon. St. Louis had won its last two games, 10 in all, and having accomplished everything they could for the 1976 season. The Cardinals went to the locker room to await their fate.